Hi everyone, this is Kwa, and uh, today I'm going to show you how to uh, display some of the search results uh, coming from custom list or document library uh, via SharePoint Online uh, environment. And we're going to see that with the classic and the modern experience. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on uh, how to get those uh, results that you want to show. So. The first thing to notice is that uh, this will work whether you created a custom content type and assign it as a default to a specific list or document library or rather if you created the columns directly. So I have like a you know, sandbox environment and we have the uh, couple of columns that I have created. So you have the team column which is like a choice, you have an effective date as a date type and a contract notes as a notes field. The documents are already, you know, created. They're random documents, to be honest, and we already uh, filled some of the information. So, um, to go ahead and uh, edit the fields or take a look at the fields, we can go to the library settings. Here, I'm going to work uh, from a document library, but it will work the same on the SharePoint list. And you can see the different fields that you have right here: the effective date, the teams, and whatnot. So one thing that I have noticed is that uh, if you want to make sure that it's properly indexed uh, so that you can display it in your search result or in the highlight content on the modern experience, is that you have to make sure, it's preferred at the very least, that you re-index the document library or the SharePoint list for that matter. And to do that, you're going to go to the settings, you're going to go to the advanced settings, and if you scroll halfway through, you're going to see re-index document library. So if you hit that, uh, it's going to show a pop-up confirming that you want to re-index this particular document library, and then you can click re-index. One of the options that you have to make sure too is that you have basically the search option set as yes on this specific asset library, whether it's a list or a document library. Uh, the default value is yes, so it shouldn't change, but just in case, I mean, that's something that you want to check out, just in case you don't see it appearing and that you're wondering why. Um, it might be because of that. It might be because someone went and uh, set the search option for that specific asset to no. The other thing, again, re-index the document library. Now, one thing that I have noticed, too, is that uh, if you want to use uh, specifically the search content web pod on the classic experience, you are going to need to set up some search schema. And to do that, you're going to need to be a SharePoint administrator uh, if you're on SharePoint Online. So the steps are pretty much the same. If you're using a SharePoint on-premises environment, you're going to be uh, directed to like central administration. You're going to go to your search service. But here I'm going to do the demo for people on SharePoint Online. So we need to go to our admin uh, SharePoint Center. So to do that, uh, we're going to type our tenant dash admin dash SharePoint.com. And if you're not sure how to navigate there, what you can do is click here and you should see the admin. And then if you scroll to the admin centers, you should be able to see right here, SharePoint. So you can click on that. If you don't see it or you don't have access to that space, that means you're not a SharePoint administrator. In that case, it's going to be a little difficult to do the steps that I'm showing. Uh, you're going to need to ask your global administrator on Office 365 to provide you access. So you're going to notice the search option from the left navigation. Just click on that. And then the first link in is going to be the manage search schema. So we're going to click on that. So if you're used to the way search service works on um, you know, SharePoint on-premises, uh, the default behavior will be where I go in, you know, I create my managed property, I map it, and then after that, uh, I go ahead and recrawl or re-index the uh, search service, the search pool, and the search content database to make sure that everything is uh, done. So a couple of notice 
uh, for SharePoint Online. A, when you create a new managed property, um, it's not always going to work. Uh, it seems like it's not searching uh, the content that you want, even if you're mapping it correctly. So the good thing is that uh, SharePoint provide, or you know, Microsoft provide few fields that start with refinable as the name and uh, the data type. So uh, refinable integer, refinable dates, refinable decimal, refinable doubles, and string. And depending on the nature of the content that you want to index to the search database, you're going to need to pick up the right one. And there's a limit on how many of them are created default for you. So you get 20 of them for each data type. In all case, uh, for the sample contract document library that I use, we have a choice field, which is going to translate in search as a string. You know? uh, the effective date uh, is going to translate to a date. And then the contract notes is just going to be a string text. And so when we map our managed property, we, we need to make sure that we type the right thing. So here I'm going to do refinable string. And you notice that right here, uh, yeah, we have all for refinable strings. Uh, there's actually a bit more for, for, for those. Uh, it looks like there's more like 40, 50 of them. And here, uh, this is where we're going to edit that. So I've already done it for refinable string 00, zero right here, where I mapped it to the uh, team column. So it's always going to start with OWS for custom columns that you are creating under SharePoint Online or even SharePoint on-premises, and contract notes right here. And then if you take a look at the refinable date, you're going to notice that I already map the refinable date 00 to the effective date column right here. But I'm going to walk you through one of them. And you can have multiple search schema mapped to the same properties um, so that you can take a look at it. So we're going to go and select one that is empty. Obviously, you don't want to use or uh, erase the work of like a colleague. So like, let's pick 01 right here. And then typically, by clicking on the right side of it, I don't know why it's not picking up right here. Let's do a refresh. Um, you would see like an edit property. Here. Okay, maybe I click on it. All right, so it got the type pre-selected. You can't change that. You can't change uh, the queries options or whatnot. Like this is all set by default from you. The only thing that you can modify, and that's what we're going to do here, is adding the mapping. So, you know, we have a column created called. Um, contract nodes, teams, and we just want to make sure that we're mapping it to the search scheme. And in order to do that, we're going to put the name of the column. In this case, it's a team, right? So right here, OWS team. That will be the one. And I click OK. And I click OK right here. So for the non-technical people um, you know, listening to this session, basically what you're doing is you're setting up, if you want, like a one-to-one -one relationship between your custom columns that you have created in SharePoint and um, the search engine. Right? So this is um, the property that is going to be used to store and retrieve all of the elements from the teams custom field. So the reason why I've done some of the mapping ahead of time is that it may take a few hours, maybe a few days, uh, in order for it to reflect in your search page. So you want to do that ahead of time, uh, really define that ahead, um, because if not, you're going to get stuck in a situation where you're ready to create the page, uh, the search mapping uh, is not provided or not done yet, and you're waiting for the crawl, right? Uh, 
right? So do that as kind of like one of the first thing if you have a similar task given to you, uh, so that way you get that out of the way. Now, if you don't see it, again, try to re-index the document library. So again, you know, like you go to your document library, advanced settings, and re-index it, and see if that helps. In terms of creating the page, there's two options. If you're using the classic experience, that's the one I'm going to show up front. We're going to create a new page. And I'm also going to show you how you can do that under the modern experience. So we're going to go to the site page and create a new search page that will display our results. So here, new, I'm going to create a new site page. Oh, that's the modern experience. Okay, let's start, let's start with the modern experience in that case. So I'm going to say, well, you know, um, under my contracts documents, which are right here, I want to display the ones that are you know, related to the creative business. So let's go ahead and creative contracts. Here you're going to hit plus, I mean, depending on your layout, obviously, but here I'm not going to worry too much about the layout. I'm just going to pick the highlight content and it's automatically going to open and you want to pick the edit web part. From here, I can select a bunch of things, you know, the site, the type of document. I'm going to leave everything as default. And the thing that I'm going to use is right here, the manage property. So I'm going to filter by a manage property. And the one that we use to store the team information is not team, it's actually refinable string zero zero. So if I go ahead and search for that, it's going to pull up. Now it's a built-in right here, so we have that built-in equals, and then we can say creative right here. So you can see it automatically filter those one, and we have like one, two, three, four, five documents, which should match the documents that we have by team right here. So five documents, one, two, four, five, seven. Great. Um, you can use, so the cool thing about the modern experience is like it's pretty easy to move between the different um, you know, layouts. So right here I'm just going to use this, why not? And you can select how many you want to display at the same time, so perhaps 20. And save as a draft, and that's it. Like that's how you could uh, quickly display the content on a new modern experience based of the custom content. So obviously if you have a content type, it's applied to multiple site collections or multiple um, sites, multiple document libraries. Um, you might be able to reflect the content across those different sites and hubs into the same place rather quickly. Um, and I'm going to show you the way to do it on a classic page, so that way we have that done too. Uh, so I'm going to navigate to the site page again. And here we're going to select wiki page, or web part page. I could have chosen either one of them. Um, we're going to give it a name, so test search contracts. And we're going to add one of the web parts that came in 2013, which is the search content editor web part. So right here, you can add it from search uh, content world, that's right. Content search, and add that. I think I've done a session where I explained like, how to uh, edit the uh, JS in order to you know, edit the layout of the content search. And um, if I found the link to the vi video, I will post it uh, on this post. But here, we're just going to focus on retrieving the content. So I'm going to edit the web part, change the query right here. And contrary to the modern experience, here you don't have to type the property name. So you can 
click on show all managed property and right here you're going to have access to all those refinable uh, properties so refinable date uh, which have our effective date for the contract and uh, refinable strings which is the teams and the notes so let's do the refinable string 00 I'm going to say contain a manual value and here this time we want to do perhaps the others uh, the other contract so let's go back here and type others I'm going to add the property filter test the query and if everything goes good we should see two results document 9 and document 8 which are right here so obviously Again, same thing. I mean, you can span across you know, multiple sub-site sites. Uh, you can define other uh, refiner options or sorting options. But essentially, to get the search to work, you have to A, do the mapping, do um, re-index uh, if needed, and make sure that uh, you're using the right properties and filters on the view. And as soon as you have that, then you know, the content should be displayed uh, properly. Right here. Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to use the two line. Yeah, those, those are just layout options. Just to show you. Save that. All right, so um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I think I'm going into some of the details in the documentation uh, associated with this video. So uh, just let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully that was helpful, and I see you guys around. Thank you.